Today we're going to be reviewing a CV from the academic perspective. Just a little heads up. I am not a recruiter, I'm not in HR, but I've been having a bunch of classes about like CVs, cover letters, LinkedIn by a recruiter during my master's degree. And I also invited a lot of people on the stream on Twitch to talk about how we can implement our CV and all of that. So these are my tips on how you can improve your CV. But if you have any other tips or suggestions, please share them in the comments. Today, I have someone helping me out on this. Finit Singularity is joining us for reviewing academic CV because I feel like I don't have that much experience on it, but they definitely do have a, a little bit more than I do. Hello. Hello. Um, Hello. So my name is Mark, AKA Finite Singularity. I've got a fairly deep background in academia. I've gone through a PhD program and a couple of postdocs in uh, specifically in civil engineering in academia. Um, I then went on to work in a small startup company trying to commercialize some of the tech that I had developed while doing my postdoc work. Did a little stint in fintech and now have another small company doing basically mobile app development for a construction company. So I've kind of been a little bit uh, all over the place doing different things, but uh, did help review some CVs when we were bringing new researchers or postdocs into our research groups while I was a postdoc. So I'd love to uh, love to help out. And lovely. Thank you for being here and helping us out. Today we're going to be correcting the CV. I really like the layout of this one. It's clean. It's perfect for academic, I would say. Like it's uh, it doesn't have like embellishment all the boo -boo -boo -boo. and it makes me want to like actually read through it. What, what do well, you I think, think? I think it looks great. The one thing I would just call mm -hmm. out right away, my wife just went through a job search a couple years ago and she was putting her photograph in the mm. uh, in the upper corner like this and later found out that a lot of places will start screening out, especially in the States here, screening out CVs with photos for a lot of different reasons. Mm -hmm. That I, I agree a lot, especially like if you're applying in the US, you should not put a picture, you should not put your birthday, you should not put anything about your gender or your or nationality. Correct. What I understood from a recruiter, it's mostly so then they are safe. Because if then yep, they exactly. they don't uh, they don't get you, yeah. you cannot say like, yeah. oh, you didn't want me because I'm a Hispanic. I didn't, yep. they can be like, oh, we didn't even know. Like you, we didn't want that information. Usually for any other kind of CV that is not academic, I would say that this is way too long. But in case for the academics, I've always like heard and understood that more pages is completely fine, especially if you're putting like uh, conferences or papers or publications and all of that. One of my advisors had told me to keep the typical CV portion of your mm -hmm. CV to front and back of a single page. But in terms of your conference proceedings and, and publications and stuff, mm -hmm. that can be as long as you want it to be. Mm. I have a question for you. It has academic yep. interest, experience, experience continued, I guess, because like there is, it's a new page. Yep. I don't think that it's needed, but anyway, yep. experience, education, research publications, and there is like peer reviewed on conference proceedings, yep. skills, yep. certificates and award and references. Do you think that all of these sections are necessary or, and also maybe do you think that if there's one, something else that could be added, what, what would you yeah, say is so the best uh, section? I, absolutely. In terms of an academic mm. CV, you need all of your publications on there. I mean, that, mm. that ultimately is like that's unfortunately one of the things that people hyper focus in in academia in terms of the rest of the sections i think that they're all good if you scroll down to like the skills section definitely having languages programming languages and tools especially if you're getting into like a technical field you absolutely do want to list your programming languages the, the different software tools that you're familiar with what i might do with the skills is put a little pull out box to the side oh like you would say um, like here like a little box here maybe not there i would typically indent academic interests in a little bit and put a box next to it that just okay. says skills can be a little bit smaller font but mm -hmm. maybe with like a gray background or something to kind of pull it out because it's going to draw the reader's eye to it mm -hmm. I, um, I have a question like mostly like for any other jobs like marketing uh, business yep. anything where there's like usually a lot of like applicants what they do companies is like they use the ATS, which is a software that just grabs yep. the information and just puts yep. them in the software. Is it used also yep. in academics? Not that I know of. And I think it's just because you don't have the onslaught of applications mm -hmm. to, especially in, I'm, I'm coming from the perspective of like an academic research group or even a professorship position. A lot of times the schools are reaching out to the people they want to apply. Mm -hmm. And it's not like you're going to get 
at, you know, 2,000 people applying mm. for uh, an assistant professor position in civil engineering, right? Okay. You, know, you don't have the pool of applicants. And mm -hmm. so I think in academia, you've got more of a unique opportunity to visually make your CV stand out. Mm, I see. I always say that you should take this as if it was either a website or like a, a piece of field. Everything that you see first is the most important thing. And it's so yep. precious. Like it has like almost like a val like a money value. Like uh, consider that you have to rent this, play this place. Like you're renting for yep. more money this part right here because it's yep. easy. You see it immediately. And the, the other thing that you can do in a case like this where the applicant has a bunch of very technical skills and they also have their academic interests there. The one thing I will say when we were reviewing CVs is academic interests were great and we typically more come back to them after mm -hmm. reading the rest of it, the, mm -hmm. the sort of narrative. So the narrative is important. It would come in at kind of stage two and you want it at the beginning because it's a nice introduction and some mm -hmm. people read resumes differently and so they might read through the academic interests first. But if you had a pullout there of your sort of bullet points of your skills, it may let you tighten up the academic interests text because mm. the one thing I will say is when reviewing these things, big blocks of text, they better be saying something really, really good in them. <laughs> So I love that uh, that idea, especially because like now that we assessed that, that this is like most of the academic CV are not going through an ATS, so not through a software correct. that analyze it. It's humans. Humans yep. are dumb. Humans have a yep. very low attention span. And like <laughs> if the first thing that they see, it's a text, uh, no matter what you wrote, maybe you wrote that you're a Nobel Prize. I would say there is low chances that they're going to be reading it. I would personally jump through directly to experience, directly yep. to that. Because yes. what if I read this? It's... <laughs> And then I go here and then they have nothing in their experience. I lost yep, time. Yep. I write a goal, see if there is something and like, oh, they've been, they did this. So cool. Let me read what they said about themselves. And since it's an academic uh, um, CV and then you have like, you're allowed to have more pages. I would not say much about how they wasted some space because like, yes. for example, like I would have said like the introduction took way too long. Like this part is it's yep. so much space to just say two I'll, things. I'll actually, you. I'll push back on you a mm -hmm. little bit on that. Go. Um, um, because I think the goal would still be, I, I would rearrange, even if I didn't move the skills up to the top, mm -hmm. one thing I would do is rearrange so that all my publications were at the very end on a next, like a page break before it so that all the publications are at the very end. And I would try to tighten it up so that the rest of the content is on the front and the back of one sheet. Okay, then uh, from outside, what I would do to make it like shorter or to make it co to condense it more, you tell me if you agree with me, but to if we're mm -hmm. trying, if our goal is to make it into just two pages, I would definitely reduce this one, like the, the intro part. Not no, I yep. don't know if the picture, like if uh, they said that you're from Colombia, I think, Hosda. I don't know, maybe in Colombia, you're like required to put a picture, like in some fields, especially like in Italy, oh, yeah. for example, if you send a CV, there is not your picture, they're like, why didn't you put a picture? What's like, because we're still out, yep. out very, very old like for example yep. in marketing if you don't put the picture it's like oh okay but if it's like computer science who cares about it something that you can do is like you can put all of these in just one line like usually there is like the name yep what i saw is like the name and then a full line with all the information so you already have yep. all right there then academic interest it's cool but again i would also like i, I would definitely try to summarize no matter what it's written there and then uh, i'm curious to go read that later i'm very curious to read it because something that i say about like introductions is like they're not mandatory in a cv if you don't put mm -hmm. the experience what if you don't put the education what if you don't put in the skills but if you don't put an introduction, no one actually expects an introduction. Yep. But if you're putting an introduction, needs to be on point. Needs to yes. be, needs to give something more. It needs to be something interesting. Another approach I've taken that mm -hmm. I've had luck with, and I actually learned it from a CV I reviewed when I was in academia, is someone had basically taken that academic interests and put it into like a one sentence tagline like almost a motto for themselves and so they had their name at the top their oh, contact like LinkedIn. information like the one that you and then LinkedIn. underneath it it was one line like one line in sort of a call out box Aww. that just said i've got these six very very strong skills mm -hmm. boom 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 and i want to apply this for mm -hmm. this particular research project that i'm applying for and it helped to set the tone of the resume which was really neat okay so that i'm very cute I, I really don't want to go read that because i first want to 
do the layout <laughs> part. But I'm so yep, curious nope. to read that. But we're gonna. Uh, no, I will not. <laughs> then we have the experience part. Adjunct professor. I guess it's the most important one since it's uh, twenty since from 2021 till now. Maybe yep. like here since we're trying to reduce the the space. I I love that it's so spaced and it gives me like time to read it. But at the same time, I will try to find a way to like you're wasting all of this space, all of this. Yep. Uh, that you can try to maybe put everything in one line. Maybe you can put these in one line only. It's maybe like this. It's easier on the eye because it's nicer to read it like that. Mm -hmm. But we try to have to find. We have to find a little bit of the balance between the two. And and the other thing I would just mention, just mm -hmm. from a physical, keeping in mind that likely someone's going to be reading this resume directly as is. I would walk down and take a look at okay, subjects by undergraduate program, and then mechatronics engineering, and then I would read electromechanical engineering. Oh. Oh, Those you are the two skip like, it. Well, yeah. And then as I'm trying to bring someone into my research program, maybe electromechanical stuff is much more important to me. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to read what's under oh, yeah. mechatronics. I would just then read the ones that are important to me. And so putting those at like mechanisms, electric circuits, DC, technical drawing CAD, like as a comma list mm -hmm. in smaller text under the header, that would be fine at that point because now my brain is in the mode where I've narrowed it down to what's important to me. And now I'm going to take the time to actually read a sentence, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's yeah. that's how it works for my brain. At oh, least. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. You know, one thing I would look at just from a psychological perspective is could you get under R&D contractor these three bullet points to be a single line each? Because once you start going into two lines, th I think that's when your brain subconsciously starts going, oh, OK, I really got to read mm -hmm. all this. But a single line, it's pulling out out what's important and maybe you bold an important word Words, at the front like, of each the, of those single lines front, yeah. and also maybe another thing that you could use to implement this thing of the one line is like right now you have uh, all of this space again here if you had like the date written on up here and then the line it would be like a smart way to have just you see a smart way a smart way yep, yep. <laughs> to have it to have it in just one line you know so like it, it still looks like one line maybe yep. you have the same words then yep. i think that you're you don't need that experience to be continued that, that part it's 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 clear that it's continuing education yep. fine i would say maybe yeah. something that maybe would be nice to see better is like where did you study because it's i have to read the msc and then industrial engineering management and then i have to find this one maybe something yep. that i would suggest is to have like one line when you bold the msc industrial engineer energy management because i think that it being a, ma a master's science degree and being in industrial energy management they're both yep. important like both yep. of them are very important it's not just you did a master it's the, the topic of the master it's really important and maybe in a new line or also like still here uh, as a comma like comma and but not in bold yep. the where did you study it like the university yep. and the the other interesting thing about academia is at least in the states here mm -hmm. sometimes depending on where you went to school Oh. It's more important to put the low where yeah. you went to school even before what you study. Yeah. Like you would go Wharton degree, University, Harvard University. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so those sorts of yeah. those sorts of things. And it, it doesn't even have to be some like world known university. Mm -hmm. If the university institution in Mendelin is mm -hmm. my Mendeley. ITM Mendeley. University, yeah. if that is like the place to go mm -hmm. for industrial, for energy, industrial management. energy management, it may be good to just flip the Orders, yeah, exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, in fact, when you look for on the internet for the template of the CV by Harvard, <laughs> like that's what I always suggest. Go search for the template for Harvard. The first yep. thing that you see, like they always put the, the school first and then the degree yep. because they expect yep. that people that are like searching for this template from Harvard, they went to Harvard. So please put Harvard exactly. first, of exactly. course. But if you, exactly. if it's not that much of an important university and you like the, the field is more important, just I would say put the, the degree first and then the yep. university yeah. and the the other thing Depends. that you can also do you can at the top when you identify yourself you can also put your degree initials and what mm -hmm. you studied after your name and likely you know you're coming in your most important degree here is your master of science my most important degree 
is my PhD. So by the time the reader gets to the education section, they already know that I have a PhD in structural engineering. Oh, so it's less important to put there. And then I can highlight the school true. or the program if that's more important. So it gives you a little bit more flexibility. And I don't know if that's right for this particular CV. But it's just another strategy that, that so. could be helpful. Because what if the they like you know that they have uh, I'm hiring okay I'm hiring I'm looking yep. for a professor and I want the professor to have a PhD what I would do is like I would be here I was like okay let's go see if they have a PhD down here but what if it's already here already no yep. cool let's go on exactly mm -mm. exactly and then yep. skills we were saying to put them up front good that potentially you... again mm -hmm. this is very dependent mm -hmm. on the position you're applying to is mm -hmm. the fact that you program Python something really important important to the position you're applying to. I'm a firm believer in, especially if I know my resume is actually going to be read as is, in rearranging my resume for a job application mm -hmm. to, to get that very specific important stuff mm -hmm. at the top or easy, easy to read, right? Mm -hmm. So if the actual software or programming language or this is a German research group in Colombia, so the fact that you speak German is mm -hmm. really, really important right so yeah. if those skills are really really important to what you're applying for get them at the top get them up in front they may not be agreed 100 and then certificates and awards perfect and then references yep. okay that then it's completely fine then once you have the the publications in a new page i think that everything else you can just make it fit into two pages let's go for to this part that i i'm okay i'm sure i'm gonna enjoy it like the, what i usually do here is i look if it if there is fufa fufa is smoke in Italian. So if there is a smoke, okay. things that you put there just to, because you felt like you had to put an academic yep. interest, I'm gonna call it out. Yep. So let me take the red highlighter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm enthusiastic about contributing to the academic growth of the future of future engineers and scientists by instructing fundamentals undergraduate subjects. This is fufa to me. So I, I would push back a little bit. I would push back on that being fluff because of academia. Mm -hmm. And if this is an application for a professorship position, yeah. people are, oh, well, departments are always looking for people who want to teach the fundamental classes because a lot of times professors get advanced and they don't want to teach the fundamental stuff. Okay. And so pointing out that I want to teach fundamental stuff could actually be a big feather in your cap. Because you saw the fundamental, okay. Then I could assume subjects such as, I could assume, what did, maybe you know better. What did they I think mean? like assume teaching subjects. Yeah, I might, I might rephrase that a little bit. Yeah, so it also means like take on a responsibility. Mm, okay, I could assume subjects such as fluid mechanics, heat transfer, blah, 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 blah. This is like on the edge of being fluff because like mm -hmm. it's nice to know that he wants to keep students with the uh, practical knowledge and not just uh, yep. teach them uh, oh this is abc that's it uh this is really interesting but at the same time from this one i don't know much about him then there is uh, i am eager to collaborate <laughs> with fellow researchers to, to researchers to explore novel solutions in this field and contribute to advancements in sustainable energy and thermal system i feel like the last sentence it's fluff yep because, i think like, the first sentence is great mm -hmm. i think the last sentence Specific. could literally just be cut. It's expected in academia that you collaborate with other people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know, it just it just is. So it's not really adding anything to the equation to say I'm eager to collaborate with other mm -hmm. researchers. That's yeah. just part of it. Um, I do like that it's split into two bullet points that are specifically teaching and research because mm -hmm. those are the two things that an academic role does. Mm -hmm. Then uh, here we have the the experience part. We start with it here. A young professor. Is it's, I would say it's perfect. Like, I don't know if, again, I feel like there is not enough uh, focus. Like I see a junk professor and then a bunch of stuff. I would rather like have more lines here, like a junk professor, department of mechatronics and mechanics, I, a new line, yeah. faculty of engineering, ITM, uh, university, blah, blah, blah. And then maybe pull out the last half of that line by like making it italic or something like that yes, on a new line, exactly. just so that it's, yeah, like then your one, eye immediately sees title and so, sort of subtitle. Mm -hmm. That one right? in italic, so. yeah. Like you, like, of course, like you should always, when you're doing your CV, think about like having bold that you have as fonts. You can use the bold, you can use the italic, yep. you can make it like smaller, you can make it bigger, you can use, yep. 
you also make it gray, which yep. is uh, a little bit like less focused, but still there. But it, mm -hmm. there's a, a lot of ways that you can make work with it without changing the font itself, just the style. Because it's better exactly. not to change the font. Like it's, it's not made put too many fonts that distract stuff. And then I have a question for you. For example, in this case, we understood that the CV is too long. We have to summarize yep. it as much as possible. I don't know yep. after like we fix the thing about, about like the space here and all of that, if we're gonna already be at two pages or not. But in this case, let's pretend we're still too long. He has a job that goes from January to July 2017. Would you suggest yep. to still put it at it being like a maintenance area assistant internship? What I do on mine, I have some good internships that had some really interesting mm -hmm. research that I did that I want to have on my CV, but ultimately they were short internships. And I, my attitude is I am going to give space in my CV based on sort of the length and the importance of the work. Mm -hmm. And so what I would do something with something like an internship is just the name of the internship. And then in your narrative, like sum up all three of these mm. bullet points in 15 word sentence. Mm -hmm. Then maybe something that I would suggest here for the thesis, especially because it's an academic, maybe have a link to it, like either a link or if you have it in your publications, put, put the, again the reference to the publication. If it's Absolutely. not in the publication, because it's just like a paper that you wrote and it's not that important. I hope not, but maybe at least put a link that people can go look at it. I think that the one, as we were saying, like uh, the reference thing, maybe this one is not how it is supposed to be uh, written. Yeah, I would, one. I would do the standard the like one. paper bibliography mm -hmm. that's used in just about every journal in the world, just because mm -hmm. it, it just fits. You've been it so clean fits. everywhere else. So why not being yep. clean also here? It's not like exactly. everything was so designy that would look bad. It's, it would just fit. Yep. Then we have the skills again. We it was it's great, but that for example, you see you wrote Python and you wrote Latex. I have no idea where you use those. If you integrated yep. them and where you wrote it before, if you wrote it like, oh, and I use the latex for this and this and that, I would be more like, oh, for sure they know it. Or like they wrote, you wrote about ANSYS. I have no idea what that is. ANSYS, maybe I don't know what's your knowledge in it. Did you play with it or did you actually work with it? Maybe during a, one of your job, you worked for like three years on it. Then I'd be like, oh, he has three years experience on this software. Like I need that. Or also yep. like tools and all of that. I would like try to integrate them. Then, then I think it's fine to also have them in the skills here because maybe they mm -hmm. eh, they didn't read all of it and they just gonna like maybe they don't want to read all of it they just want to go look at the skills if you have that skill yep. that they're desperately looking for so then maybe you can add it also in here just to summarize but definitely put it also up there so they know where you used it and then certificates and awards and reference I think that this is uh, pretty fine I think it's great mm -mm. okay do you have any other tips for uh, our friend Ozda? Um, I, you know, like I said, I think that the the information that's in your CV is fantastic, and with just some kind of tweaking and tightening of a few places, I think it's great. All right, Ozda, if you want to fix it and then send it to me again so we can revise it again, just so I can give you a thumbs up at least on Discord. Just send it on Discord, okay? Absolutely. But that's it.